What's up throttle peeps? It's Mickey here, your host today as we get started on the ice cream van. We've got a lot of things to tackle with this. In the last video, we got a lot of the uh, interior together. As you can see, we got the suede headliner and a bunch of other stuff in. We're now just waiting for our dashboard and a couple other bits to come back from SOS Customs where they're getting wrapped or color changed to black so that it all is cohesive inside. Uh, Ricky and I got our work cut out for us on this van. We are adding our Optima batteries, as you can see here. We've got a nice yellow top that we're gonna be putting in here. But as you can see, the tray that used to be in here, when we pulled the battery out, the tray actually came with it because it was so rusty. So my job for this afternoon is gonna be to whip up a new battery tray out of some steel material. I went ahead and cut it out with our Lincoln Plasma Cutter already. And what we have here is basically an 11 inch by eight and three quarter inch piece of steel. So what we're gonna do is make a piece that we can weld back into the van. And then on the front, we'll use the uh, Optima supplied battery mount but before I get cranking on this thing, I want to show you guys something I recently picked up. Uh, I got this nice little table here and a uh, cart. I was dumpster diving out at our dumpster the other day and... Oh, that's nice, man. Look at this thing right here, dude. Put the photo studio next door was actually throwing away this rolling cart, which I didn't know what I wanted to use it for at the time, but I knew that we could use it around the shop for something. marked out our battery tray. These two lines represent a fold so that uh, we're gonna be able to capture this battery on three sides, including the side inside the van that's already there. All right, so went ahead and used our Eastwood metal bender here and tossed a couple bends on here. Clean her up with the whizzy wheel and uh, we're off and running. All right, well, if any of you guys have ever welded before, I'm not gonna be able to weld this to the rust in there. So I got some cleaning up to do before I can actually mount this. All right, well, I got the battery tray welded in, went ahead and actually put weld through primer on the bottom and on the top surfaces so that when we welded it in, it was all sealed up, threw a coat of black paint on it. You can check it out now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the battery in. All right, well, the battery's all hooked up now, and I guess I should talk about this battery really quick. You guys notice it's not your traditional, like, lead-acid battery. So not only is it a sealed application, it's designed for deep cycle use and starting applications, so we really should have no issues with this battery if it gets low from all the things we're running off of it. Uh, it should be able to cycle itself down to nearly flat and back up uh, without any issues. 
If that should happen, we do have an optimal batteries charger here, which works great with these yellow tops. Well, just got another delivery. This is our driver's side headlight frame. Again, as Evan mentioned in the last video, this is like our third set of these, but we finally got it figured out and we got the right ones. We just got to do a little bit of adjusting. Actually, that's pretty good right there, huh? We've got uh, this piece here. We've got one for down here. We'll go ahead and get that painted and put on. Uh, one thing we noticed is that our grill actually lays back about an inch and a half too far. It's very um, upright, where these panels are actually pushed forward. So I don't know if this is for a different year or something, or maybe a, maybe it's from a C10, I'm not sure. But uh, what we're gonna do is actually modify the feet on the top of this and kick it forward so that it matches this angle here. Uh, it should be as simple as just making a couple little brackets. So right now I finished putting one bracket on the uh, grill and it's just mocked up. This is one out of three brackets. So I uh, wanted to see how flush it is. And as you can see, it's pretty much uh, dead on exactly what we wanted. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did here on the other two and then we should be done. So there you have it, all three brackets have been extended and they've been uh, put in place and this is it. Okay, so right now, as you guys can see, we have the uh, status seat for the ice cream van outside, and we have this funny looking thing down here. I don't even make it showed it already, but it's pretty much a base for a seat. So I can swivel 360 degrees. And the purpose of it, this is gonna be for the passenger seat. So when we are uh, handing out ice cream from the passenger, you can literally turn 180 and be facing the side of the door where we're gonna be issuing merchandise or ice cream. So this is the first time I'm even seeing one of these things. So it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how it works and how we'll be able to mount it in there. So right now what we did, we use our, my existing brackets that I made before and we placed it on top. So we're just gonna add two more brackets that's gonna be able to bolt in and out of this thing. And then we're gonna put this in the van, measure it and make sure that it spins 180 without hitting anything. Almost center, I haven't measured anything, which is me and Mickey just eyeballed it. Uh, <laughs> we reconciled it. And then um, once it's perfectly centered, I'm gonna make the, uh, the marks for the, uh, where the holes or the bolts are gonna be to bolt it from this bracket to this existing uh, swivel bracket. Let me give you an update. I finished painting our custom bracket that we built and it looks brand new, it looks nice and smooth. So the next step is gonna be, I'm gonna put the, uh, the status seat back on here. I'm gonna put the downstar hardware on and then once it's set, we're just gonna grab this whole thing and we're gonna put it 
in the passenger side of the Astrium van. Okay, so this van's gonna have a lot of electric stuff going on. You're gonna see later in this video when Ricky and I unbox a couple of things from our friends over at Metra. We need to have a control center. So Ricky and I decided this back wall, which is gonna go all the way to the ceiling when we're done, is gonna be our control center. Here we have two 2000 watt, 12 volt DC to 115 volt AC power converters. And what these are gonna do is they're gonna take power from our Optima battery. Now, mind you, this is just a placeholder we, we actually have a yellow top that's going to go in this location so essentially these are going to turn 12 volt power to 115 volt ac so that we can plug the freezer in and anything else that we have running inside the van that needs 115 volt power right here so we'll have four outlets um, some usb connection points too in case somebody wants to throw a phone back here and charge it or some other device that uses a usb charger um, we have that accessibility here and then we'll have a 12 volt battery up front in the engine bay as well. That's to do the normal duties of what the van needs, the uh, audio system and those sorts of things will all be run off that. Auxiliary things off of this battery back here and off the inverters here. And so the main function of one of these inverters is gonna be so that we can plug the freezer in and keep it cold while the van is driving. When we get to an event, we'll also have this Ryobi generator on board and this will run off of gas. So this can be, you know, 20 feet away from the van, powering the van while we're at events. If we don't have shore power, uh, while we're on the road, we can rely on the inverters to create power for the freezer. So hopefully that explains sort of where we're going with this. We want to make sure that we're prepared for any situation where we need to have this thing cold. Between these two combinations, we should be good and the ability to plug into shore power wherever we go. Okay, well, not only did the guys from Status Racing hook us up with these awesome custom seats for the van that match delivery, um, they also saw that we had the factory steering wheel on here. And the factory steering wheel looked like this. And as you can see, it's got quite a large uh, OD. It's quite a bit bigger than the, the Status Racing unit that I've installed here. Part of the reason for going to this smaller wheel rip is clearance because we went to a bolstered seat the factory seat was just flat on the bottom and didn't sit quite as high uh, this seat sits a little bit higher uh, for better viewing and also uh, it has these bolsters so in order to get in the van you actually have to hop up over this bolster this big steering wheel was way too big for what we wanted to do so we went on to install this more of a racing steering wheel this is a bigger od than a standard racing wheel so that will help with turning the van it won't be too difficult you go to too small of a wheel and it can become a problem it's a uh, it's harder to turn the van but we should be good with this one very happy with the way that turned out now the real story is going to be when we get our dash back and we can actually start working on the audio system and the fun stuff that's going to happen in here uh, and we're told that we're just a couple days away from having that back from sos customs when that gets back we're going to toss it back in and we've got some surprises up our sleeves for you guys so you're gonna have to wait for those oh hi access integrate which is one of metro's brands it's a universal steering column control and this is gonna has an interface that's gonna allow us to actually change tracks, turn up the volume, turn down the volume, hopefully control some other things too. I'm not sure. I've okay. never actually used one of these. On so. a 1980 something van? Yeah, that's nice. unheard of, right? What do you got? I have a Ooh. review mirror life video stream. These are what the new Chevy's got. Yeah, like the new Chevy it. HD has. Them, so. Yeah, so it's actually a touch screen monitor. And it's and a it's, live view it's a live of the view. rear view camera. So it becomes your rear view mirror without having rear windows because it's all digitally by the camera. Yeah, so in our case, we don't have any rear glass windows because I blacked those out and we're gonna have a wall in the way as well. So I'm not perfect. sure we're actually gonna use this because our head unit actually will have rear view camera control. 
but it's nice to have this here and we'll probably use it in another project if we don't use it on this one because this is a state-of-the-art piece i'm excited to actually use this on one of the cars so i'm assuming this is the backup camera for the monitor right that'll be the, the backup stereo. camera we use for either the mirror or our pioneer head unit which we haven't talked about yet so we're shut up that. bro yep rear parking, rear assist. parking assist what do we got here this is heavy 240 amp battery isolator with wiring kit. Holy Nick. cow. So this is when you're running multiple batteries. Which we are. So it's basically a huh. heat sink and junction box for two batteries. Multi battery isolator. This is a pretty nice That's piece. Cool. Oh, LED, LED strobe light yeah. kit. <laughs> oh, dude, this van's gonna be crazy. Easy. I think we're gonna make a control panel switch in there. That's gonna control yeah. all this stuff. You mean this? Ah, that is the Dude, one. Dude, this is heavy. Eight gang switch panel system. So this is gonna be able to run all of our lights and everything that we're putting in this van. See this. Oh man, this is billet aluminum. Yeah. This is sick. These are high output dual row LED light bars. And I am told that these things are built like tanks. We're gonna do a video. They actually sent us an extra bar that we're not allowed to put on the van. Okay. But what we are allowed to do is put it under water, put it in the freezer. Really? Cut it in half with a chop saw, drop it off the roof of the building, play soccer with it, and plug it in and make sure it still works. I am told that it can handle all those things. No way. Bro. I am told you can cut this in half with a chop saw, plug it in, and it will light up. We're gonna have to play with one of these, but we have two of them to put on the van. You guys are gonna have to watch the next video where Ricky and I are actually gonna put one of these through the torture Holy test. Jesus. It's buff. Dude, I have installed a bunch of these lights in my... Yeah, this is ridiculous. Nothing that I have ever installed is this thick and definitely not this heavy. This is really, really heavy and I can't wait to see it. All right, well, that's it. We got all our metric goodies here. We've got a heap of work just in these two boxes ahead of us, let alone the rest of the stuff that's still inbound. Um, so anyway, we hope you guys are enjoying this ice cream van content. We are this close to actually finishing out the interior. We've just got uh, to put in the hours now and start cutting some wood and routing some cables and uh, this van will be done and on the road. Leave us some comments down below and we'll see you guys in the next one.